Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to present a much more practical, kind of real-world approach that we adopted in Manchester to some antifungal stewardship issues in our intensive care units. I will be predominantly um, focusing on Canada because that's what we, we targeted. Um, and, but that is not to say, as Tony quite rightly mentioned, that there are big issues around the diagnosis of invasive aspergillosis in ICU populations. So I think, I know this audience knows this, but I think it is worth laboring a little point about what exactly anti antibiotic or antimicrobial stewardship is. Because if we don't know, we're going to have terrible difficulty convincing anybody else what to do. So you can take what the Americans um, say, which is the right antibiotic and the right patient at the right time, at the right dose, at the right route, causing the least harm to the patient and future patients. Or we can use um, the UK one, which is a little bit more wordy, about it being an interprofessional effort across a continuum of care, involves timely and optimal selection of antimicrobials, best clinical outcome for the treatment of infection, minimal toxicity to the patient, and minimal impact on resistance and future patients. They're essentially saying the same things. I have to give it to the Americans, I'm afraid. They, they got this one right in terms of marketing. So that's what antimicrobial stewardship is, but what is antifungal stewardship? And, and is there any difference? What's the difference? Well, if you ask me, it's purely just the right antifungal at the right time, at the right dose, in the right patient, causing the least harm to the patient and future patients, and we can say the same thing on this side. <coughs> But I think it's really important, and it's really important to labour this point a little bit about what exactly we're talking about when we talk about stewardship. Because I have these conversations all the time. I have them with my infection specialist colleagues. I have them with non-infection specialists. And they think it's about control and discontinuation. They think this is about policing. They think that we're going to walk into their ICU and stop everything left, right, and centre. Everybody stop everything. And it's not. It's not about that, because it's about treating infections optimally in the right patients. So in the patients that have those infections, trying to figure out which patients have those infections and treating them appropriately. So if we take a very simple example from the antibacterial world, and this is a real life example, so yours truly gets called to see a patient with Staph aureus bacteremia. And hey, I have a permanent pacemaker inside you, the pocket is tender, there's um, a concern that they have an endocarditis on the ronogram of flucloxacillin every, every you know, four times a day. Well, automatically, this isn't about me stopping. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not about to stop this flucloxacillin. I'm certainly not about to decrease a dose or spend less money or think about, uh, you know, changing to oral. What am I really going to do? Well, I'm going to increase the dose to two grams every four hours, which is an endocarditis dose, thus in getting a 200% increase. I'm spending more money, but I'm doing the right dose in the right patient for the optimal outcome, because that's what you need to do in terms of stewardship. And there is an important point here that people do tend to forget, and we need to be certain about this as infection specialists, or we are not going to convince any of our colleagues. So you all know this, but it's again worth saying, why is it so important? Well, I think resistance is really important, and we've just seen, and, and I thought it was really interesting to see the difference in epidemiology of candida infections in a pediatric population compared to what we're used to dealing with in the adult intensive care unit. And the changing epidemiology of fungal infection is really important. We've already had a brief discussion around the use of antifungals and, and the use of prophylactic antifungals in the ICU. But what happens when we start to use more and more antifungals in adult ICUs? Well, we see more and more resistant species. So we start to see glabratas and cruzii, and you can see that very clearly in the American data. It's important to think about our toxicity and side effects.